السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته دكتور نضال الصالحي University of Petra uh, Today uh, in this lecture we will uh, start with chapter 7 and as you can see chapter 7 titled strategy formulation corporate strategy and chapter 6 if you remember the title was strategy formulation also but it was business strategy next chapter chapter 8 will be also strategy formulation but we will take the third level which is the functional level strategy so we are now in the second st still in the second st stage which is the strategy formulation just to remind you very fast we started the environmental scanning in chapter 4 and 5 external and internal and when we went to chapter 6 it was the second stage which is the strategy formulation strategy formulation as a stage it will take three chapters 6 7 and chapter 8 so let's start with the corporate level strategy in formulating our strategy this is the learning objectives you can use this at the end of the lecture in order to evaluate yourself if you have learned and understand those uh, learning outcomes or learning objectives so let's start with the definition of corporate strategy when we say corporate strategy uh, we are talking about the strategic alternatives available for the top management in order to take decision which strategic alternative okay they are going to use in of course in the coming uh, period uh, especially if it's long term when you speak of strategy it's a long term planning so top management will decide which uh, alternative strategy to use now in this area there are key issues facing the corporation as a whole Again, I will repeat, this is the responsibility of top management. The first issue is directional strategy, and the second issue is portfolio analysis. So this chapter, by the way, it will be as two parts. But of course, the, the first part, which is the most important, it will be directional strategy. We will discuss it. And by the way, we cannot finish the directional study, uh, strategy in this video. We will continue, of course, next lecture. Then after that, at the end, we have a short material for the second part, which is portfolio analysis. In general, directional strategy are three strategies, main strategies, growth strategies, stability strategies, and retrenchment strategies. In the portfolio analysis, we will talk about it at the time. We mean to say the industry analysis. When we analyze the market or the industry that the company is working in let's start with or take a look uh, let's say an overview of the corporate directional strategies which is the first part the directional strategies as you can see are three growth strategies okay and it is two main growth strategies there are two main okay uh, the first one is concentration strategies vertical and horizontal growth And the second main growth strategy is diversification. It could be concentric or conglomerate. Of course, we will discuss all of this in detail. So I'm just showing you. The second directional strategy is stability strategy. Under the stability strategies, we will discuss El Pus or proceed with caution strategy, no change strategy and profit strategy. And the third directional strategy is the retrenchment. Uh, under this, we will discuss later on the turnaround uh, strategy, captive company strategy, sell out or divestment strategy, and bankruptcy or what we call liquidation strategy. So let's start with the first one, which is the growth strategies. Growth strategies, we will start, uh, or before we start with the growth strategies we have here a general definition for each directional strategy when we say growth strategy that means that you are the company want to grow 
okay, to expand the company activities. But when we say stability, it means that the company is after what? After or their objective at this time is to make no change, to stay as we are. Okay, we will not expand or we will not reduce anything. Now, retrenchment strategies in general, it is about reducing the company's level of activities. This is the general definition of the three of them. But of course, now we will discuss them in details. And uh, today we will be able, in this lecture, we'll be able to finish only the growth strategies. Let's start with the growth uh, strategies. What is growth strategies? You, as a company, sometimes you want to expand your activities. You want to grow. Uh, to grow. Uh, you want... Uh, now, your growing could be internally or could be externally. Now, internal growing, it's both. You can ex expand your operations either globally or domestically. At the end, it's a growth. Okay? Or it can be externally through... And when we say externally, through mergers and acquisition. What is merger? Merger, when two companies, okay, two or more corporations, involve in a transaction in which both companies exchange stock in order to create one new corporation. For example, two companies, they agree to, join, to, to, to merge. Company A, if it will merge with company B, then the outcome will be one company, which is C. So C, combining the two companies together. Example, Sony Ericsson, for example, as you can see, Sony is a company, it was a company, separated one. Ericsson, it was also separated company. They make a merging. They merge together, okay? They were company A, company B, they merge together, and they come up with one company, which is C. Now, what is acquisition? Acquisition is different from merging. Acquisition is buying a company. 100% purchase of another company. You buy the company. It will be under your umbrella. Okay. Sometimes in the same name because it has an image or brand name so that you want also to, uh, let's say, increase your profitability and profit growth. Now, there are in the growth strategies as I told you, our lecture today will be only for the growth strategies, the first directional strategy. The two basic growth strategies are concentration and diversification. Now, concentration strategies, and we will see it now, on the current product, that means that I want to expand my activities, but within the same product clients, okay, and the same industry. I will not go to a new industry or new product where in diversification as we will see later on it it means that i want to diversify in addition to my current product lines or my products i want also to expand my operations to other product lines or other industries let's discuss them in more details and try to uh, understand those two basic growth strategies deeply. Now, when we say vertical growth, what does it mean? Vertical growth achieved by taking over a function previously provided by a supplier or distributor. Please, I want you to concentrate with me. We will talk about two things in the growth strategies, supplier and distributor. Now, if we want to vertically grow, then we have to overtake, okay? To overtake means, uh, for example, if you supply yourself by yourself with the raw material, then you are doing a vertical growth. Or if you own the distribution channels and you don't have any brokers, then you have a vertical growth. I want you to understand this sentence only, please. Even though that we will talk about it later on, but it's, I want you to understand it now, at this moment. When we, when we supply ourselves by ourselves, we call it a backward vertical integration strategy. But if we control the, distribu the, the, the distribution channels or the sales centers, then we call it a forward 
integration or vertical integration strategy or vertical growth now let's see the relationship when we speak of vertical growth results in a vertical integration so what is vertical integration the degree to which a firm operates vertically in multiple locations on an industry value chain from two things again extracting raw material and this is regard with uh, this is of course related to supplier to manufacture or to retail retailing is related to the distribution channel please remember them okay when you vertically integrate your strategy then you are either supplying yourself by the raw material then you are you are talking about a backward this is a backward integration and this is retailing which means controlling the distribution channels which means a forward uh, integration strategy we will also see them here in a clear way backward integration assuming a function previously provided by suppliers so uh, going backward on an industry value chain for example mcdonald's mcdonald's they are using a backward vertical integration strategy why because mcdonald's they don't buy their raw materials okay they don't have suppliers i mean they supply themselves by themselves that's why we said that mcdonald's have a backward vertical integration strategy they they have farms okay for their cows they have farms for the uh, potato tomato and and everything so they supply they don't buy any raw materials from anybody that's why they have the backward integration forward integration it's not related as we said to suppliers it's related to distribution channels now some companies also they don't want somebody to distribute their products or services they do it the same they own their what i mean they own their distribution channel they own their sales centers and at this time of course they are going forward on an industry value chain now for example in some countries pepsi called pepsi or cola uh, they own that is all the distribution channels they own it by themselves they manage it by themselves they don't use uh, brokers uh, let's say or other agents they do it by themselves so we can say that they are forward they have a forward integration strategy now vertical integration still we are in the vertical integration now it we there is something that i want you to understand the concept transaction cost economies now if before if for example you are buying your raw material now and somebody is doing the raw material from you suppliers i mean then they you want to change you want to go backward vertical integration strategy means you want you don't want uh, outsourcing as you can see here anymore i want to make my own raw material i want to supply myself by myself then you need a transaction cost we call it economies which means that you have to be ready okay that always any vertical integration either backward or forward is more efficient than contracting or outsourcing yani it will be cheaper for you to supply yourself by yourself instead of paying more for the others to do it for you okay now vertical integration continuum in vertical integration it has degrees darajat and sometimes it's not really a full in integration a full, uh, it's not a full backward integration strategy or a full forward integration strategy that's why we can say that the value chain okay the ownership of the value chain need to make and sell a product with no ownership at all it means that according to harrigan proposes that a company's degree of vertical integration can range from total ownership to no ownership let's see the types of vertical integration now you as you can see that's why we call it a continuum vertical integration continuum here in full integration it means total ownership now until of course it will be less a little bit less until 
you will reach the long-term contract which means no ownership at all it means that you are outsourcing your let's say supplies or outsourcing your uh, distribution channels let's dis let's discuss these four types again i want you to know that it will start from full or total ownership until the long term contract which is no longer uh, or you don't have any ownership let's start with the first one full integration it's clear a firm internally makes 100 percent of its key supplies i am fully integrated i don't buy any supplies i i am producing all of my raw materials and i am using it in my company i don't really or at the same time and this is of course when we talk about supplies backward when we talk about distributors i own my distribution channels then this is also a full uh, forward integration strategy so it could be a backward or a forward okay let's go to the next one which is less with less degree than the full integration i am not fully integrated but i am taper or taper integration or taper integration which means of course it's also called concurrent sourcing which means that the company is producing less than half of its own requirements yani i am producing half of my supplies and the other half i am buying it from suppliers that's why i have a vertical integration here but it's a partial one a taper one like example here we call it a backward taper integration if it is related to supplies and we call it take note here because one day in one of my exams students thought that it's only uh, the taper integration is only with backward backward no this is only an example it could be also with distribution channels so it's either backward taper integration if it's with distribution channels it could be it will be a forward taper integration so it's two types backward taper integration and forward taper integration okay and now the quasi integration is a little bit less now okay which means here the company by the way the company here does not produce or make any of its key supplies but it purchases most of its requirements from a supplier from outside supplier that are under its partial control so concentrate here partial control it means okay i am i, I don't have really a full integration okay or i am not producing any of my supplies i'm buying it but i am buying it from another supplier from a supplier who i control partially control i have control over it it could be shares for example it could be a sister company uh, or sometimes uh, you could be a member of the board of directors and so on now also again it could be a backward quasi integration as an example when it re it's related to supplies but it's also it could be a forward quasi integration if it is related to the distribution channels now we will come to the last one in the continuum of vertical vertical integration as we saw a while ago which is the long term contract which means that there is no ownership at all it means i am not I am buying, I am not producing any of my supplies. I am buying my raw materials from outside suppliers fully. That means here that I have outsourcing. Okay, that's why we said that there is no ownership here for the company and there is no really vertical integration here for the company because they are buying their supplies totally from the suppliers. Now, as I told you a while ago, that we have two okay in the growth strategies we have a concentration strategies as we talked about a while ago it is horizontal growth it could be a horizontal growth or horizontal integration now horizontal growth or horizontal integration what do we mean by that horizontal growth it means in the consist, uh, concentration strategy expansion of operations into other geographic locations 
okay yani i am serving only let's say the 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 market of aman i will add to that the market of erbet the market of zarqa the market of karak i will spread to more geographical area then i am doing a horizontal growth always horizontal growth result in horizontal integration of course horizontal integration also the degree to which a firm operates in multiple geographical location the same that means that i am operating as i told you i am adding more geographical area i'm adding more markets uh, okay then but of course in the same industry that's why we call it concentration strategy yani we are expanding here to new geographical area new markets but it's very important for you to know since it is a concentration strategies it is in the same industry okay now unlike the of course when we will go to the diversification strategies now diversification strategies is different story i am diversifying my products my markets my products but in different industry from my current industry now there are two di types of diversification strategies concentric which is related we call it related diversification okay and the other one later on will be unrelated diversification but let's start first with the concentric diversification or related diversification it means that the company want to grow okay in into a related industry different industry but this industry is related to my current industry for example if i am in the mobile industry okay then i move to the, uh, then I, i also invest in the communication industry okay i diversify my product for the telecommunication company as a telecommunication company then i am i am making diversification i am i am making growth but it is related one why because telecommunication companies are related to mobile manufacturing companies like for example if if zain uh, if zain will or, or let's say iphone will also uh, move or will add another industry to his own industry now which is the telecommunication company in addition to manufacturing mobiles then we will say that he has a diversification but it's a related one and by by the way nestle they have also related diversification because they have a lot of products a lot of items in different industry but at the end it's all food that's why we call it related industry even fine okay uh, shirket fine also the same they have related diversification now what do we mean by the term synergy here synergy means the concept that two businesses two companies will generate more profits together than they could separately now food court if you go to for example inshallah bas tanhal al umur bi salama kulkum zurtu al molat wal bitshu fi food court always there is always a food court a food court different restaurants mcdonald's uh, uh, babai's uh, uh, kfc hardy's and so on in the same area all of them they are making synergy why synergy it means one plus one is not equal to two i mean in yani a qualitative way it's equal to three it means when me and you we join together in a business then okay both of us bo bo both of us will have more profit like what is happening in the malls in the court, uh, in the food courts now the other type we said the first diversification is related diversification why because i am uh, i am expanding to another industry but it's related to my industry but the conglomerate diversification it is unrelated diversification it means that i am diversifying into another industry which is not related at all to my current industry in terms of the product management reala realize sometimes that the current industry is unattractive yani okay i have a name i have a brand name but my industry for example in selling uh, electric devices it's not really uh, that profitable so what i will do it's not attractive anymore so i will move to Uh, to what we call a diversification to another industry 
اوف كورس مع المحافظه على الكرنت اندستري Also, firms sometimes lack outstanding abilities or skills that it could easily transfer to related products or services in other industries. And of course, if this is the case, I will move to a different industry, which is unrelated industry. I want to give a very easy example here. Do you know that Mitsubishi, for, for of course, the unrelated diversification, Mitsubishi usually started with uh, electric devices, by the way. They were producing Vitamax uh, uh, TVs and so on, Mitsubishi. They did not start with car. Now, Mitsubishi, we can consider them conglomerate or unrelated. They have unrelated diversification. In addition, uh, because the, 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 at that time, they want to expand, they want to, go, to, to make a growth. What they have, to, what they did, they use the diversification the unrelated diversification, they move to the car manufacturing. Now, car manufacturing and electric devices manufacturing, they are not related industry. So to move, they move, they add. Up to now, they still have the electric devices, of course. Now, they add a new industry, which is not related to the current industry, because they move from the electric uh, devices industry to the car industry. And this is very good. Uh, example when it comes to diversification even Manasir in Jordan uh, he ha he is in different industry he is in the oil industry okay which is the gasoline stations and so on he is also in the IT industry information technology industry and of course this is again another example of unrelated diversification and you can see also a lot of examples this end our lecture for today uh, for Monday ثلاثين ثلاثة طبعا آه، 2020 آه، بتمنى السلامة للجميع وبتمنى انكم دائما تراجعوا الفيديوز وتراجعوا المادة واي سؤال آه، ممكن any question you need uh, you can ask the question during uh, the class time آه، بنشوفكم على خير thank you very much